rectilinear motion. Rectilinear motion is the movement of an object along a straight path. And there are three equations of rectilinear motion. And the first one is V equals U plus AT. The second one S equals UT plus half AT squared. And the third one is V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. Take note that there is one other equation we normally use along with all of this. And that is the total distance traveled is equal to final velocity plus initial velocity divided by 2 or multiplied by time taken. So this is the equation 1, this is equation 2, and this is equation 3, the third equation of rectilinear motion. This one is normally used in line with all of them and it was used to derive the second equation of rectilinear motion. How did you come about this equation? Take note that average velocity is total distance traveled divided by time taken. Total distance traveled in the specified direction. And um, if you introduce a denominator of one so we can cross multiply, we have total distance traveled equals to average velocity multiplied by time say average, we're talking about final plus initial divided by 2. Average velocity, that is final velocity plus initial velocity divided by 2. And we have our total distance is average velocity, that's final velocity plus initial velocity divided by 2, or multiplied by the time taken. So that is how we came about this equation being used in line with the three equations of rectilinear motion. The derivation of these three equations of rectilinear motion will be shown one after the other. The first equation of rectilinear motion is V is equal to U plus AT, where V is the final velocity, U is the initial velocity, A is the acceleration, and C is the time taken. The derivation of the first equation of rectilinear motion came from the definition of acceleration. You know, acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity with time. Hence, you can write acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity. Or we say acceleration is change in velocity with time. So we represent this with a um, symbol. Acceleration is change in velocity divided by time taken, or you say change in time. Change in velocity, it means final velocity minus the initial velocity. Final velocity minus initial velocity divided by change in time. Change in time, or time taken. Since A is equal to V minus U divided by T, we can introduce a denominator of 1 here so we can cross multiply. V minus U multiplied by 1 is equal to A times T. 1 multiplied by V, V. 1 multiplied by minus U, minus U. A multiplied by T, A T. From here, we can see that if we move minus u to the other side, v will be left alone on the left hand side. So you move minus u to the right hand side, it will change to plus u. v equals to equals to at. Minus u has left, so we have only v. Minus u is moving to this hand side, so the minus changes to plus plus u. u is leaving this place and moving to the other side. So we have right u on the right hand side. What's the next step? v is equal to u plus a t. This is the equation 1. This is the first equation of rectilinear motion. I stated it like this because in the first section, in the introductory part of this video, I see that it has e plus u plus at. So at plus u is same thing as u plus at. That's the first equation of rectilinear motion. So we derive the second one. 
The second equation of rectilinear motion is S equals ut plus half at squared. The derivation of this came from the fact that the total distance traveled is equal to average velocity multiplied by the time taken. Total distance traveled is average velocity multiplied by time taken. Take note that average velocity equals to final velocity plus initial velocity divided by 2. You know, average velocity, average, that is the final velocity plus the initial velocity divided by 2. So we substitute this into this expression. So the total distance is final velocity plus the initial velocity divided by 2 all multiplied by the time taken. Recall that the first equation of rectilinear motion is V equals to U plus AT. So we can substitute this expression for our V. Hence, we have that the total distance S is equal to, instead of writing our V, we have U plus AT. U plus AT plus U divided by 2 all multiplied by t. Hence from this we can add u plus u. We have 2u. Let me take this up. So the total distance is equal to u plus u. We have 2u plus at all divided by 2 multiplied by the time. This can be simplified as s is equal to 2u divided by 2 plus at divided by 2 all multiplied by time why did i express this as this because 2u plus at divided by 2 is something as saying 2u divided by 2 plus at divided by 2 hence i substituted all of this for this in this expression So from here, S is equal to 2U divided by 2 plus AT divided by 2 all multiplied by T. From here, I can say the two will cancel each other. The two will cancel out the two. Hence, I have S is equal to U plus 80 divided by 2, that is the same thing as saying half 80. All multiplied by C. Why did, they say, why did I say so? Because x divided by 2 is the same thing as saying half x. 10 divided by 2 is the same thing as saying half of 10. 10 divided by 2 will give me 5. Half of 10 is 5. Hence, 80 divided by 2 is the same thing as saying half 80. So I'll still multiply all of this by my t outside. From this point, I can say s is equal to. I want to open the brackets to expand this. U multiply by t. Ut plus half 80 multiply by t have 80 squared. This is the second equation of rectilinear motion. So from this, I want to derive the third one. The third equation of rectilinear motion is v squared equals u squared plus 2as. And it was derived from the first equation of rectilinear motion. The first equation of rectilinear motion is v equals to u plus 80. Hence, when we square both sides of this equation, hence we have v squared equals to u plus 80 squared. v squared is equal to u plus 80 squared. That's v squared equals to u plus 80 squared means u plus 80 multiplied by u plus 80.
So we expand this expression and we will have v squared equals to u squared plus u80 plus u80 plus a squared c squared. And from this, we can combine the u80 plus u80 to have two u80. v squared equals to u squared plus 2u80 plus a squared t squared. We can have it as a b squared equals to u squared plus, we can bring out what is common here, 2a open bracket 2u80 plus a squared t squared divided by 2a. This is how you bring out what is common in an expression. We brought it out. I wrote exactly what I had. Then I divided that as exact expression I had with what I'm bringing out. So once I divide this by this, divide this by this, I will have what will be left when I bring out what is common from this expression. This is how you bring out what is common in an expression. I wrote out 2a. I wrote down the exact expression I had. Then I divide that same expression by what I was bringing out, 2a. Since from here, if I say 2a cancel 2a, I will have the same expression I had here. So from here, I can have this as b squared equals to u squared plus 2a multiplied by 2u80 divided by 2a plus u squared t squared divided by 2a. So from here, I can say 2 will cancel 2 and a will cancel a. Also, a will cancel the square here because a squared is a times a. a squared is a times a. So if you have a squared divided by a, you'll be left with a. Because a times a divided by a, you'll be left with a. That's why from here, I had to just cancel the square. So I'll be left with a. So let's continue from the next. So from here, I can have v squared equals to u squared plus 2a open brackets what do I have here u t plus a t squared divided by 2 and from this I can write it as v squared equals to u squared plus 2a open bracket ut plus 80 squared divided by 2 is the same thing as saying half 80 squared. Now you will recall that s equals to ut plus half 80 squared. So we substitute the expression for s into this expression. Hence, we have v squared equals to u squared plus 2a s in brackets. And I don't need a bracket. I'm taking it off. So I have v squared equals to u squared plus 2as and this is third equation of rectilinear motion. This is how you derive the three equations of rectilinear motion. So next we'll be solving problems based on these three equations of rectilinear motion.